What common theme do you see in each of the following movie references? Disney, do you see some characters here that may have a common theme? Is it love? Is it hate? Is it peace? Is it war? What do you think? How about in this picture? Star Wars. Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker with the Emperor chilling in the background. Do you sense a theme yet between these different photos? Harry Potter, you've got Voldemort and uh, Malfoy and Bellatrix Lestrange on this side. And then over here, Harry and Hermione. Then you've got Ron and, and uh, all of their side. Do you get it yet? Do you see the theme? How about this one? DC heroes. Villains. Thor. Thanos. The Infinity Gauntlet. Spider-Man. And the uh, other guys. Why is it always good versus evil? How is this connected to the gospel of Jesus Christ? What do you think? Is it interesting at all that all of these different movies play off of a classic good and evil, right and wrong mindset or approach? Why is this ring with us? Why does this feel so correct or so accurate? In his 2017 talk, The War Goes On, Elder Lori R. Lawrence said, Everyone on Earth is a war veteran. We have been battling the host of evil in an ongoing war that began in the pre-mortal sphere before we were born. Pre-mortal war was fought with words, ideas, debates, and persuasion. Satan's strategy was to frighten people. Thankfully, God's plan triumphed over Satan's lies. God's plan involved moral agency for mankind and a great sacrifice. Jehovah, known to us as Jesus Christ, volunteered to be that sacrifice, to suffer for all our sins. He was willing to lay down his life for his brothers and sisters, so that those who repented could come back clean and eventually become like their Heavenly Father. We are in a war for the souls of humankind, and Heavenly Father inspired Paul, the Apostle, to teach about how we can survive Satan's attacks. This lesson is going to help you understand what God has provided to protect you from the evils of the world. Know where you stand today and make a plan to upgrade your armor for battle. Today's lesson is suit up into the whole armor of God. And it's based on Ephesians 6. The Robert E. Hales in 2013 said, quote, your fathers and grandfathers never faced the temptations that you face on a regular basis. You are living in the last days. If your father wanted to get into trouble, he had to go searching for it. Not anymore. Today's temptation finds you. Please remember that. Satan desires to have you and sin lieth at the door. How will you resist his aggressive tactics? And that was back in 2013. In 2013, the internet was still very young. There was no AI. Things have really progressed very rapidly in the last few years. What do you think are the greatest differences between what you are experiencing as a teenager and what your parents experienced when they were your age? I know for me, I've got kids that are teenagers and my teenagers are growing up with the internet, with high speed internet. When I was a kid, we had this thing called dial-up with 56K modems in it. It was really slow. There, the internet was nothing. We had bulletin boards. There was no Google, none of that. And so we didn't really have as much temptation, at least from that front. Uh, our temptation was avoiding work and playing Nintendo. I got a Nintendo when I was a kid, and that was a huge distraction. What about your parents? Why don't you ask your parents, what is the difference? Talk to them about what they experienced versus the trials you face today. Go ahead and ponder the following questions or write your responses in your journal. What are some ways that Satan is trying to tempt you personally? What are you doing to seek the Lord's help to withstand Satan's temptations? What have you done well and what do you need to improve on? Pause the video if you like and go ahead and write that down and ponder on those things. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, Paul writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. What did Paul say the saints in his day were fighting against? What similarities do you see between what they were going through back in their time and what we're fighting against today? Why would Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ want us to be protected against evil? What does the, what does the desire teach us about them? And what did Paul invite the Ephesians to do to be able to withstand these evils? Pause the video if you want to answer these and discuss them or comment below. From Ephesians 6, 10-13, we learn that if we put on the whole armor of God, we will be able to withstand evil. The armor of God is a metaphor or a symbol for the protection Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ offer us. In the battle that we face, that has been going on since forever, God's armor is especially designed for you and the dangers in your life. As we watch this next video, note what stands out to you. You can take notes or comment below. You got a suit? Get a suit up. So what did you notice in that video? Did you like the montage? Comment below, let me know how we did. What do you think about the principles that Paul taught? Were they really for his day when they had physical armor? Or are they still in our day? Do they still apply? Do we still fight against great evil? Do we still need spiritual protection? I would argue that we do. Let's go ahead and discuss and dive into more details on the spiritual armor that God offers us. It's time to suit up into the whole armor of God. So you can pause the video if you want, and you can draw a picture like this armor right here and uh, mark out each piece that we're about to read Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That video from the church, they illustrate what it would be like in Paul's day with their ancient armor and how the physical armor relates to our spiritual protection. You saw that centurion or that Roman soldier take some serious blows, but his armor stopped the arrow, his armor stopped the sword, saved his life. It's the same with us, with our spiritual armor. Let's read those verses together in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So. If you haven't yet, go ahead and label the different armor in the drawing that you made based on the video and the text. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and mark those up or we can keep on moving forward with the lesson. This is what it would look like. Of course, this is a artist's rendition, but this is the different pieces of the armor. Russell M. Nelson has encouraged us in the April General Conference to be peacemakers. And we heard many references to that in just the last conference in October of this year. If you illustrated your armor of God, I would love for you to upload it uh, in the chat. You can link to it. I'd love to see what you got. What dangers do you see with wearing only a portion of the armor? If you don't have the shield, for example, do you think that it's going to be a lot harder to protect yourself from the incoming uh, darts from the adversary? And get this man a shield. What can we do each day to, be, to more fully put on the whole armor of God and protect against the temptations that we face? Is it a daily thing, or do you think going to church once a week is enough? What do we need to do to armor up? How can you help someone who is struggling if you are already protected? So if you have armor and you have a shield, can you help shield them with your faith? Can you give them encouragement? Can you share the, your, the spirit with them and help them to overcome the enemies and challenges they're facing? M. Russell Ballard said, quote, I like to think of this spiritual armor not as a solid piece of metal molded to fit the body, but more like chain mail. This is what chain mail looks like. You can see I've, I've armored him up in some chain mail. Chain mail consists of tiny pieces, of dozens of tiny pieces of steel fastened together to allow the user greater flexibility without losing protection. I say that because it has been my experience that there's not one great and grand thing we can do to arm ourselves spiritually True spiritual power lies in numerous smaller acts woven together in a fabric of spiritual fortification that protects and shields from all evil. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with uh, Elder Ballard? Yeah, do you see the little links here? You can see the tiny links and they're all woven together. And so he has the protection of the armor, but it's much more flexible than a solid piece of metal. And he says that it's based on the small things we do each day the numerous small acts. Do you agree with that? What are your thoughts? Comment below. My invitation to you today is to remember that we are a part of the eternal spiritual war between good and evil. And we need to suit up daily the whole armor of God that survived. 